I'm Ken Cito, the CEO and co-founder of uh, Massive Damage. So our, ours is a little startup we started uh, last November. Uh, we just launched our uh, first game, uh, Please Stay Calm, uh, in the US in mid-October. Uh, our startup is focused on um, building location-based uh, social mobile games. Uh, it's kind of a list of acronyms, but uh, I'll, we'll show the little trailer first, and I'll, I'll uh, talk a little bit more about it. That icon is from our Christmas promotion, so we had to <laughs> uh, change it up a little bit for uh, the holidays. Um, I won't talk in, about the, rain, the zombie reindeers or Santas in the game. Um, so our focus with our startup was to really broaden the audience um, for uh, not only uh, mobile social games, but uh, for location-based gaming. Uh, it's, uh, there has been Several companies have uh, have gotten into that space, but they've their approach is quite different from ours. We're actually trying to use location as a really interesting um, context for gaming, as opposed to being uh, the main driver. So in our game, we don't actually ask people to run around the city and do things because most people play social games from their office or at their on their couch uh, for hours on end, apparently. So to ask them to move around is kind of asking a lot of uh, the majority <laughs> of players. So we've actually tried to be very pragmatic about our approach to location-based gaming. We use lo real-world location names to really uh, connect with the player's affinity for their favorite places like their office and their the cafe around the corner from where they work uh, or at home or their supermarket uh, and kind of drive the gameplay there. So really most people just kind of hover around where they normally are during the day as opposed to having them run around the city. We do have people who do that though. Somebody actually walked to the, the, uh, the pier at, um, in San Francisco so they could make Alcatraz their safe house. So <laughs> that's kind of cool. You hear little stories like that. Um, but uh, we're doing, uh, doing pretty well. We just launched the game. Three months ago, we have about 10,000 daily active uh, players, and uh, there's uh, very good monetization and, and, and engagement across our players. Basically, about uh, double the industry standard across all the various uh, key metrics, uh, and I think that is due to having that uh, emotional connection with uh, you know, fighting zombies at actual locations that you recognize and uh, helping other people playing the game in their neighborhoods. So. Um, that's kind of what we're up to. Awesome. Well, I don't have a video presentation, um, but I'll start sort of, and it's really interesting the, the different kinds of companies that are on this panel, because our trajectory has been a bit different into the space. So Bitheads itself has been around for 16 years and started as a very hardcore technology company solving sort of net, network problems, very like low level um, brain trust stuff that I don't pretend to understand and Scott understands a little bit more than me. Um, but over the, over the course of those sort of 16 years, the, the realization was that even a lot of this technology was having to have a face, like a, and the content was becoming increasingly important. Even something as simple as like a New York Times crossword app or whatever, this is still you know, consumer facing. Uh, so I was brought in as part of the shift towards uh, providing a content basis on this technology. And over the past uh, four or five years, we put out uh, a number of different games. Our most recent one, uh, which we were very uh, privileged to get some support from the OMDC on, was uh, Sony Sideways. It's for Sony Online. And it's uh, it kind of an integration of music and graffiti uh, and branded entertainment. And it's a story of a child who is actually becomes graffiti and he has adventures. It's like a platformer. Um, but it's very, very uh, intertwined with uh, music and sort of hip hop uh, style. So pure sort of content on that. That and we've done things like Dungeons and Dragons Daggerdale, which is a bit more. I don't know if there's any D and D uh, nerds in here, but but that's uh, certainly a more mainstream product that we've produced. Uh, we've done games for um, 
all mobile platforms, console, um, social media games. Uh, but what we're very excited about and this sort of the next generation for us and probably why we we're, were asked to be on the panel was uh, our interest is in connecting these different platforms and in ways that haven't been done before. So um, typically what would happen is you port an experience, you play Call of Duty on an iPhone and quite horribly it's the compression of a huge screen down to this little thing that you're trying to play with your thumbs, you're getting smoked by some you know, kid across the world. Um, and it's just not a good experience, but it's because people haven't taken the time to, to figure out how people actually use these devices. And it's getting much, much better. I think social media has made that much uh, clearer. Um, but we're developing and have developed um, a vertical slice of technology that allows people to play. It's cloud-enabled gaming across three screens. So it's the same game that's accessed in different ways, in a platform appropriate ways across different platforms. So uh, as an example, and this we have not done yet, but the 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 example we're striving for is to have a continuous sort of 24-hour experience with a user. So the user at, at home is playing in a, in a living room environment or a PC environment. So they're playing a game in the way that it's supposed to be played with your 5.1 you know, surround sound and it's dark and you've, you've got a distance between the screen and yourself. You're playing with a controller. Uh, in that game, then the social media game, which you're playing at work in a very, very small uh, window that you hope your boss doesn't see, is kind of the meta game of that, which in, in an appropriate way, you have sort of five minute bursts of engagement in that. But it's not the same game. It's contributed to it. So if I level up here, I get a reward in here. Or by having an experience here, I'm getting something on the mobile version. And the mobile version is what keeps people engaged with it to and from work. So if you can imagine kind of an ecosystem that people live in, but it's not a port of a game across multiple platforms. It's the same game that you're playing in different, in different ways. So one of the, um, uh, the good fortune we've had as well to work with the Experimental Fund and the folks at the CMF uh, has been um, in working on um, a prototype for some of this technology in conjunction with uh, the Neuromancer project that we're, we're on because there's no better, <laughs> no better ex forward facing consumer expression of technology than William Gibson and Neuromancer, right? So um, what we still, and it, it is now completed and CMF will uh, we'll see it shortly, um, but essentially without giving too much away on that, it's, it's a way, it's a, it's a thin slice that demonstrates how you can have a, a console experience that actually um, is constantly uh, pinging back and forth between your, that and your uh, mobile device, but in an appropriate way. You're not playing the same game. You're using this as a hacking deck and that as a, as a, um, a, a proper sort of third person uh, interface. So that's kind of how we've come at it. We've, we've come at it from a technological standpoint and then sort of morphed into content and now we're back in a place where the technology is driving the user experience in really, really interesting ways. And, and to, to sort of second what you've, you've said, like this is the absolute best environment to do those kinds of things in. Ontario in particular is very supportive of these kinds of endeavors and you know, really uh, we should be very thankful to be, be, uh, be working in this, this kind of supportive environment. Yeah. Nice. Um, hi, I'm, I'm Nick Salski. I'm the founder of InGamer. Um, in a nutshell, what InGamer is, it's a social game that you play in conjunction with live sporting events. I mean, before I get into kind of the nuts and bolts of what InGamer is, I want, you know, I'll speak to a little bit of the philosophy that kind of convinced my partner and I to quit our jobs a few years ago and, and, and focus on building this startup. Um, you know, some of the things that, that we believe are a matter of fact truths is that the future of content, the future of the way that people will engage with content um, is that the only content people are going to have to watch in real time in the future are sports, award shows, elections. I mean, everything else is going to be on demand, PVR, Google TV, Apple TV. I mean, the ability to capture that real-time audience is so important. And what social media has shown us is that in social media, when things happen in real time, that's when Twitter, that's when Twitter blows up. That's when Facebook is getting very popular. So there's a very big power along with that real-time um, engagement. Um, and, you know, and some of the other things that are very important for us is when you look at sports, which was the first um, kind of area of real-time content that we focused our attention on, is that over 80% of everyone that's watching live sports has a companion device either in their hand or next to them, whether it's a tablet, a desktop computer, or a phone. So at the end of the day, you have an audience that is 
proven to be fragmented or distracted from the actual game itself through a lot of these other screens. And at the same time, they want to be a part of that real-time social conversation, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook, or they're on their email, or they're text messaging their friends. So this is an audience where brands and broadcasters are starting to lose, quite frankly, because the audiences are fragmenting all over the place. So how are you as a broadcaster going to go and turn to a brand and say, come and and pay for a 30 second commercial, come and sponsor this piece of content when brands are becoming a lot more savvy to understand that their audiences and their consumers are engaging in completely different areas. So that's where we started focusing our attention on a couple years ago is to create an experience that can allow that sports fan to engage in real time along with all of their friends in a way to give those broadcasters and brands a way to connect to them in real time. And that's where we decided to focus our attentions on fantasy sports. Now fantasy sports, for, for those of you that Aren't, aren't that familiar with it. I mean, it's been around really for about 30 years. It took a big turn in 1993 when it went online. It used to be a bunch of stat geeks with their pens and, you know, papers and pencils and the baseball stats in the newspaper. And then it went online and then a lot of people started kind of engaging with that. And, you know, as of, as of uh, 2009, there were 30 million uh, avid fantasy sports players in North America. And those 30 million drove $2 billion worth of revenue every year, you know, 1.2 billion in advertising. That's a lot of money. Um, but those 30 million were just those hardcore sports fans. And there's 130 million avid sports fans in North America. So there's a huge amount of casual sports fans, more of these social, um, social uh, casual consumers that haven't ever engaged in this type of interactive experience. So what our goal was, was to create an experience that you can play in real time that would be very easy for the audience to engage with, who could uh, it would parlay that social passion that we that we all have for sports. At least we all had for sports. I mean, I would argue that sports has actually become a lot less social now because of all these other devices. People seem to be more concerned about what's going on in other games or where something else as opposed to what's actually happening on the field or the ice or the court. So uh, we ended up, uh, my partner and I, Simon DeBoer, we developed, we started developing this platform uh, before the real-time stats technology to actually drive uh, this type of uh, experience actually existed. Uh, so we did a pilot last year with the Hockey Night in Canada, and then in the fall, we, uh, we signed a deal with uh, Rogers uh, and Sportsnet to, um, to, kind of, to partner up with something that we call Sportsnet InGamer. We were in a soft launch throughout the fall, and we actually launched more formally um, on Saturday for the NFL playoffs. The other thing that was exciting for us about that is Rogers, um, that Rogers doesn't broadcast the NFL playoffs. So one of the other ideas for broadcasters is you can generate lots of revenue for properties you don't even broadcast because there is value to be had with these second and third screens. It's hard because no one's actually really successfully yet proven this space. Integrated media is a word we all talk about almost every day, but it actually isn't here yet because all of the major media companies are still very siloed and they all want to get there and they're starting to go there. And, um, and uh, you know, so it's, it's an exciting time for us. Um, because our belief is that future is a fully integrated experience where audiences can engage anywhere they want, anytime they want, with anyone they want, in any, in any particular device or platform that they want. Because content, as we all know, it's, there's no such thing as broadcast and broadband and, and print and radio anymore. Everything's digital. Everything is the same thing. And until we, as an industry, start actually thinking that way, we're really not giving the consumers what they want. Anyway, I'll, I'll stop becoming evangelical about that. So I, uh, what I'll show you is just a quick little video. is more of like a place setter uh, until, uh, until us with Rogers and Sportsman, we put together kind of our, our full kind of how-to video with personalities and such. But you'll see this is a video that uh, plays along with our game. And what I would say is um, uh, have a look. And it's, right now we have launched hockey and football and it's an easy game to play. People can play any, any night they want. So it's something that's very, um, uh, it's very comforting for people because I think the second you tell an audience member they have to do something a certain way, they're less likely to do it. So if you force people to do something every day, they're not going to do it. So um, I guess roll the video, and then you'll have a good idea of kind of what the experience is all about. 